Next tip is train as you fight. We've worked really hard to make simulation more and more uh, realistic. So a lot of the time we will use live humans like Brian very kindly offering to be a drunken Irishman there. And he um, is one example of many actors and helpers that we use. So much better than an unrealistic mannequin at getting people in the zone. So that, that fidelity, that physical fidelity and simulation we think is really important. I mean, uh, Marty, one of the paramedics here, gets stabbed in the chest. And he, it's not a pretty sight, is it? But um, he, you know, he deteriorates physiologically, he becomes bradypneic, bradycardic on the eye simulate, and so the team has to talk through a thoracotomy, but not do it on him. Uh, but it get, that team was in the zone. They were really feeling the stress of having a deteriorating human with them. So we use the I simulate system, which enables us to create believable physiology on the monitor. But it also the latest system, the so-called reality system, enables us to have the observers in a different room, looking at the monitoring numbers, looking at the audio visual of the sim without interfering with the sim. So completely removing the observers from the sim. The only people who are at the sim are part of it. And in fact, we've also removed the voice of God. So we employ confederates. So the paramedics who are the ground crew who are on scene working with the HEMS trainees, they will be instructed to provide all of the clinical information. So when the doc listens to the chest with the stethoscope, it will be one of the paramedics on scene that will say there's still no air entry on the left. There will be no facilitator with a clipboard or an iPad giving the information. And it stops that disruption of the flow, if you like, because you haven't got your learners turning around to the facilitator to say, okay, what can I hear? Or is there a rash? Or we, we, we've done away with that. And that's been really, really useful, I think, for fidelity of the sim. We mark all our simulations and we find that there's usually four or five clinical objectives for each sim, but we're far more interested in the non-clinical stuff. So on our scoring sheet, We've got a lot of stuff about scene management, leadership, communication, situational awareness, cognitive resilience. That's the stuff we're really interested in. And we give the team a score at the end as well as individuals. We're, we're interested in team output.